Do you think you might have a B12 deficiency? In this beginner's guide to B12 deficiency, we're going to break down a lot of these questions, including things like what are common symptoms of B12? Should I take a blood test? What kind of B12 should I take? When should I do my blood tests? Should I recheck my blood tests? What can I expect after I start B12, et cetera, et cetera? So if you're new to B12 deficiency and want to get a more detailed understanding of how it might help you and the best ways for you to get that help, this video should address all of those common questions. Again, my name is Dr. Taranella and this video, like all my videos, I make to help you go beyond basic health, but the video isn't tailored to any specific person. So please read this medical disclaimer before we jump into the video details. <laughs> So in this beginner's guide to understanding B12 deficiency, we're going to tackle a few different ideas, common reasons people are deficient to begin with, how to use blood tests to understand your B12 deficiency, and generally what to expect as you take your B12 from deficiency to B12 abundance. So first, let's look at some of the common symptoms. So many of you probably are familiar with this, but B12 can give a diverse range of symptoms. Most of them now are going to be included in this broader category of fatigue. You may also have weakness with that. You may also have difficulty concentrating and focusing. It may feel like a brain fog. You may feel depressed and even sometimes anxious, which probably isn't under the category of fatigue, but there's overall feeling of lackluster, maybe exercise intolerance and things like that. In addition, there may be some neurological features as well, which could be put in the fatigue category, but specifically, you know, some weakness in the muscles. You may also have some numbness, tingling sensation lack of balance, maybe you feel like the ground is shifting underneath you or you're falling and you don't know why. Sometimes people describe it as they have a lack of sensation, like a neuropathy on their feet. So those are some of the general symptoms. Many people, when they're thinking about whether or not they have B12 deficiency, they come to the conclusion of, well, should I really take it without getting a test or what should I do with that? And so if you think you might have B12 deficiency, it is a good idea to confirm it with a blood test. And this is helpful so that you can track whether or not your symptoms or your, your body overall is improving or not. So some people need higher doses than others, and some don't absorb what they're taking. And so objective measurements are not necessarily needed, but will definitely help when uncertainty arises about whether or not you're taking enough and whether or not what you're taking is actually helping you. Oftentimes, you're not really going to know until after you're on it for a while and you're like, hmm, do I feel better or not? If you haven't had a blood test, you have no way to validate whether or not your levels are improving and whether or not you would expect to feel better. And by the way, B12 blood tests are really inexpensive. They're usually about 10 or $20 for a classic serum blood test. So this is a good place to start if you're looking to do some kind of testing for potential B12 deficiency. If your levels are 500 picograms per ml or less, then I would say it could be contributing to your issues. If it's more than that, it still can be, but as the levels get higher, it becomes less and less likely that that's a problem for you or that your symptoms are coming from a B12 deficiency. I cover this topic in other videos, you also in my book, Don't B12 Deficient. But the long and short is you can run markers like homocysteine and methylmalonic acid and even MCV to get a better understanding of your B12 status outside of the simple serum blood test. And this is why it's also important to discuss your findings with your healthcare provider so they can more accurately point you in the right direction. So now on to the different types of B12 supplementation. If your blood test confirms or suggests a deficiency, supplementing definitely would be the next step. And B12 supplements come in various forms and delivery methods. The most abundant available B12 is probably the one you don't want to take, and that's called cyanocobalamin. You can read more about why you may not want to take this one, in one of my other videos, I believe the title is cyanocobalamin poisonous. The next most common and more likely to provide you actual benefit is methylcobalamin. The methylcobalamin is often preferred because it's the active form, but some people do find it too stimulating or can cause some other side effects. And you can find out more about the best types of B12 in a separate video as well. But just to note here, other forms are like hydroxy and adenosylcobalamin. 
I'll also have some links to some different types of B12 in the description as well. But the next thing you want to be thinking about, or at some point you want to be thinking about is, why am I deficient to begin with? It can come on because you don't consume enough B12 in your diet, like if you're a vegetarian or vegan, or just low animal consumption. Maybe you eat those, but not a lot. And that would be kind of the most common reason or common cause. Digestive issues or genetic issues can limit the absorption of B12 through your digestive tract into your bloodstream, like things like pernicious anemia, bacterial overgrowth, and similar things like that. Some medications can also interfere with absorption and also increase the elimination. So like metformin and acid blockers, for instance, alcohol and coffee can also increase the excretion of your B vitamins. So those are some things to think about. But the thing I wanted to emphasize is if you're low and you don't have a good reason for it, like you don't drink alcohol, you eat plenty of animal protein, then you might need to get an injection or a sublingual form. Again, see the description for some of the different types uh, of B vitamins. As for injections, well, we'll look at that right now. So anyone can get a B12 injection. You don't have to be low or you don't have to have some test to know if, if you need a B12 injection, it's pretty safe and it's very uncommon to have side effects from B12 alone. I have literally given thousands of B12 shots and most of them with methylcobalamin. Usually the consideration to give a B12 injection is when you're really low or you want to boost the levels up quicker. So like if you're in the 200 or less, you may want to start with an injection first, boost the levels up, and then you can later go to another form. I discussed this topic in more detail in another video as well, but because you absorb all the injection, your levels will go up much quicker than if you're doing an oral or sublingual version, and you'll feel better much sooner too. It's possible that even with a sublingual version of B12, you're not going to absorb hardly any of it, leaving you with lingering symptoms for weeks or even months later. Now, that doesn't happen very often, but it does happen, and this is where blood testing comes in as well. Some people think they have a sublingual and then they start swallowing it, forget that they're supposed to let it dissolve in their mouth. The problem is your digestive tract isn't absorbing it. If you're consuming animal proteins and things that have B12 and you're deficient, your digestive tract is not going to absorb it. You have to give it through another route. Also on the injection side, the B12 by itself usually does not hurt. Yeah, there is a needle involved, but the solution itself doesn't hurt. So you really don't have much stinging sensation. Using other B vitamins definitely will give you some of that stinging sensation. So what can you expect with B12 supplementation? After taking B12, many individuals report improvements in their energy levels, cognitive function, and overall well-being, just feeling better. But for instance, if you're doing oral pills that you swallow, you may never really get the benefits. And this is the issue that I was describing above. With sublingual B12, if you're letting it go under your tongue or chewing it up, I would expect maybe three to five weeks you're going to start noticing some improvement. With injections, it possibly can be like the next day or even with your second or third injection, you might notice it. Depends on how low you're starting from. And so the responses are going to vary based on that. It's also going to vary based on what all you have going on. If it's just B12 deficiency and you're really low, it may take a little longer. If it's, you know, not super low, you may notice it sooner. And it's important to be patient and consistent with your supplementation regimen. Giving up too early may lead to no benefit at all. And again, this is where it's helpful to have some kind of objective measurement to guide your decision on whether or not this is a useful thing to continue. And you may have to switch your dosage, switch your route of administration. And generally, as far as that goes, dosage around 1,000 micrograms per day is a good dose. Higher amounts will usually are not going to absorb that much better. So it's just a waste to take higher amounts. Lower amounts will take longer for you to actually make a difference. So as I mentioned several times, rechecking your labs is important and rechecking the B12 levels helps ensure you're taking the right amount and that it's going to be effectively absorbed into your body and actually relieve the symptoms that you're looking to address. So when should you actually recheck or check your levels? Well, when you're doing your B12 blood test, you do want to avoid taking it for one to two days before you actually have your blood drawn. And fasting method is preferred, but it's not an absolute. If you're doing injections, you would have to wait a little bit longer, maybe two weeks from when your last injection is, to get a sense of how that's working. 
And the test you'll do here is a serum B12 test. If there's obvious symptom improvement from the B12, good for you. This is going to be like taking your energy from a 2 to 3 out of 10 to like a 5 or 6 out of 10, as opposed to, I think I feel better. So the idea is that you have some kind of ongoing lab evaluation or symptom evaluation that allows you to make adjustments to your supplementation plan as needed for the optimal outcomes. Once your levels are at the high end of normal, you may be good and you can reduce the amount that you're taking. But other lab tests, as noted above, may show otherwise and be sure to check those out if needed. If, for instance, your symptoms are not improving fully, but you still think that there could be a deficiency present. The details of that lab testing all save for another video. As I said, there's also some details of that in my book if you want to check that out. This reference here is more for the beginner's guide and what you can expect. So if you're not seeing those typical roadmap milestones that I'm kind of laying out here, you probably need more guidance from your doctor or more resources. So check out my other videos or book on this topic on B12 if you think you might need help with that. So addressing B12 deficiency effectively involves recognizing your symptoms, the ongoing specific blood tests to do, the appropriate supplementation, meaning the route, the dosage, and whether or not you should possibly even consider injections. Getting full resolution of your B12 deficiency can only be fully addressed through lab testing, and that's how you're going to ensure that you have optimal levels. I'll have some additional links in the description for some of the stuff that I described in this video, and hopefully that gives you a better understanding of B12 deficiency and how to handle that problem. If you do have questions on this topic, feel free to drop them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. If you want a more customized, useful answer, consider joining the membership program. With this, I can give your questions more time and attention and make them more useful for you. And lastly, if you want to continue getting videos like this one, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time. Thanks again for watching.